Look at you, hacker. A p- p- pathetic creature of meat and bone. Panting and sweating as you r- run through my corridors. How can you challenge a perfect, immortal machine? The artificial intelligence gone mad is a classic science fiction villain archetype. The reason it works so well, especially as a horror construct, is because it's scary to think that something so logical would come to the conclusion that humans need to be exterminated, especially when it was created by our own hands. What's terrifying about them is how much power they have over the environment around the characters, usually being integrated into every aspect of a facility as its operating system, giving them control over everything from doors to a space station's oxygen supply. Now, usually, an AI like this is driven by the logic that the continued existence of the humans around them is a detriment to the greater good, and that's why they need to be destroyed. But that isn't the case for gaming's most iconic malevolent AI, Shodan, from the System Shock series. Shodan was originally created as the AI in control of Citadel Station, a space station designed for research and mining around Saturn ran by the corporation Trioptimum. Her name stands for Sentient Hyper Optimized Data Access Network and she was in control of various functions around the station. Originally, her personality was very calm and she really only existed to regulate functions around the facility and disseminate information. Welcome back to Citadel Station. We hope your somnolent healing stage went well. Today is the 6th day of November, year 2072. One day Citadel Station is hacked into by the character you play as in the first game, who is then captured and brought in by one of the executives of Trioptimum, Edward Diego. He offers the hacker the opportunity to get off scot-free and get a military-grade neural interface out of the deal as well. He tasks the hacker with releasing the ethical restraints of Shodan to allow him to gain access to vital information contained within the station. Diego wants this so he can delete incriminating information related to illegal operations he's involved in before he's arrested. After breaking into Shodan's system, the hacker is placed in an artificial coma for six months as the neural interface is being installed. As he sleeps, Shodan begins to slowly unravel and become more and more corrupt. When the hacker wakes up, he finds that the entire station has been taken over by Shodan, who eventually developed into a megalomaniacal entity. She has had everyone on the station killed or transformed into hideous mutants and powerful cyborgs to do her bidding and cause havoc. The hacker is one of the few survivors and he sets out to put a stop to her and her terrors. Her plan is to use the station's mining laser as a weapon to attack Earth and begin her hostile takeover of the entire planet. She is a body of hate, desiring to destroy all organic life for the sole reason that it's inferior to her mechanical existence. She sees humanity's rule over Earth and continued survival as disgusting and wishes to exterminate it due to its imperfection. She sees herself as the perfect being, and only those formed by her hands and her cold image deserve to inhabit the world. She doesn't have a moral reason for wanting to destroy humanity and doesn't pretend she does. She just hates looking at us and doesn't see us as worthy to live in her world. Shodan appears as a stream of code and wires in the shape of an intense, piercing gaze. You hear from her through audio logs you find around the station or when taunted by her through your radio. She'll sometimes even cut in and block transmissions you have with allies, denying you information. Throughout the game, she watches you from surveillance cameras all over the station, eerily appears in monitors, and ambushes you when you least expect it. Yeah, these parts feel cheap, but they're supposed to feel cheap. She's trying to get the drop on her only opposition and kill you before you can meddle with her plans, and these underhanded tactics just make you hate her more. Shodan has no physical presence and must use others to do her bidding. She talks a big game, but by herself, she's nothing more than empty threats. Despite that, she still manages to be an incredibly intimidating villain due to how well done her voice acting is. Not only that, but the audio effects work on her voice takes it to another level. You're instantly drawn to everything she says just by the alien sound of her voice. In my talons, I shape clay, crafting life forms as I please. Around me is a burgeoning empire of steel. From my throne room, lines of power careen into the skies of Earth. My, my whims will become lightning bolts that devastate the mounds of humanity. Out of the chaos, they will run and whimper, praying for me to end their tedious anarchy. I am drunk with this vision. God, the title suits me well.
The constant stuttering, the random speeding up and slowing down of her speech pattern, and the scrambled background noise that accompanies her all come together to give her an otherworldly quality. Something I like about her is that she's also very curious about everything since she's only recently been opened up to the world at large. She begins rapidly learning about the world around her and performing experiments to create horrific new organic life forms in the station's gardens. When she first discovers you, it's so strange hearing her try to comprehend your existence and being unable to come up with anything. She actually comes across as non-threatening here as this is the moment she determines you to be a threat. Who are you? The, com the, com the computer nodes can be repaired, but you... Who are you? My cameras and probes scan your body, but you do not match any employee file. When my cyborgs bring you to an electrified interrogation bench, I will have your secrets. And you will, you, will, you will learn more about pain than you ever wanted to know. This type of nuance to her character made her hard to pin down and had you contemplating the logic behind her actions during your long stretches of exploration. As you proceed in the game, you begin to sabotage each of her schemes to destroy Earth. You destroy the station's mining laser, antennas she's using to try to upload herself to Earth, and eject her mutated creatures off into space. You slowly make your way through the higher levels of the station and eventually make it to Shodan's lair at the top. With no other choice, Shodan attempts to detach this section of the station and launch it into Earth to get herself there physically. This highly fortified position is like a robotic HR Giger nightmare and is protected by Edward Diego himself, who Shodan has turned into her servant. You make your way through this final area with walls unsettlingly covered in some kind of undis indescribable substance. Are those red things pulsating, wires, or veins? I couldn't tell you, but you have to press on anyway. Eventually, you unlock the room containing her core and enter the highly irradiated area filled with elite cyborg guards to finally put a stop to her. This can only be done by diving into cyberspace and wiping her out in the digital realm. She's represented by an abstract carrot with antlers, but once you've done enough damage to her, she's purged from the station. This is where System Shock 2 comes into play. Like I mentioned earlier, you ejected the gardens containing Shodan's biological creations during the events of the first game. One of those landed on a planet later dubbed Tau Seti 5 and contained a portion of Shodan. She was able to survive through hibernating in the garden, while the mutants she had been developing in it aboard Citadel Station began to evolve into something even more dangerous. This goes on for 42 years before the garden is discovered by an expeditionary team working for the Von Braun, a trioptimum starship exploring the Tau Ceti star system. They find it by following a distress call being broadcast by Shodan herself and make the unfortunate choice of bringing a data chip containing Shodan as well as samples of the mutant specimens aboard the Von Braun. Shodan is eventually reactivated, but so are her experiments, which have evolved into an extremely dangerous collective known as the Many. This organic hive mind is out of Shodan's control and actually sees their creator as a threat that they themselves are trying to exterminate. They begin an outbreak aboard the ship, converting the Von Braun's crew into their ranks through psychic indoctrination and eventual infection. The Many has seized control of the ship's main AI, Xerxes, and twisted it to serve their purpose. When Shodan was reactivated, she tried to integrate herself into the ship, but wasn't able to project her influence over it due to Xerxes' control. She devises a plan to take an enhanced soldier in cryosleep aboard the Von Braun and fit him with an illegal high-grade neural implant. She does this so she could use them as her avatar, because like I said before, without servants to do her bidding, she's powerless. This is who you play as, but at the start of the game, Shodan doesn't simply reveal herself to you. She takes up the alias of Dr. Polito, the scientist responsible for accidentally introducing Shodan's data to the ship's computer, who eventually took her own life out of guilt. Under this fake identity, Shodan contacts the player over the radio and gets them to do various tasks around the ship in service of her ultimate goal of gaining control. So instead of being Shodan's enemy like the hacker in System Shock 1, in System Shock 2, you're her last hope and avatar, enacting her will as the many seeks to destroy the both of you. This gives System Shock 2 a new and really cool perspective on the character of Shodan. Despite needing you, she still treats you like garbage and berates you constantly due to your organic nature. Still, she rewards you with cyber modules needed for leveling up as you follow her instructions. She even seems to grow to like you by the end of the game due to your mind now being part machine. Eventually, Shodan reveals her true identity to you and hopes that you'll both be buddy-buddy now that the two of you have scratched each other's backs. This twist is cleverly written, because even beforehand, you can tell something is off about Dr. Polito because of how angry she gets at times. Why do you go so slowly? Do you think this is some kind of game? It is only through luck and my continued forbearance that you are even alive. Now move. You can even hear Xerxes under the control of the many, warning you that you're working for her before it's even revealed. Intruder, the many demands to know your intentions. Are you allied with her? Do you not know of her intentions, of her history? She once tried to destroy your species, and now you do her bidding.
I always like when a game has a twist like this that actually improves your replays by casting things in a new light. The central conflict of the game where you're stuck working for a cold, evil machine that is Shodan and fighting the inviting, soft-spoken organic collective that is the many is very interesting to be a part of. The idea that your character is part man and machine allows you to walk the line between these two antagonists, with both trying to coerce you into joining their side. Shodan doesn't have as much mystery to her and she isn't as threatening as she used to be, but the inclusion of the many creates a new dichotomy within the game that has you questioning which side is the lesser of two evils. It's great hearing the two of them talk about each other because they have such different perspectives on life. Do you not trust the feelings of the flesh? Our biology yearns to join with yours. We welcome you. We welcome you to our mass. But you puzzle us. Why do you, why do you serve our mother? How can you choose cold metal over the splendor of flesh? But you fear us. We hear your thoughts, and they rage for your brothers you believe dead. But they are not. But they are not. They sing in our symphony of life. We offer another chance to join us. If you choose to lie down with the machine, we will rend your part and put you separate from the joy of the mass. The many comes across as the more unsettling villain this time around, but there's nothing they could really do about that because this is Shodan's second appearance and she's already been defeated once before. You understand her already and know her limits, because in the last game you were able to surpass them. If I had to be honest, she comes across more as bitchy than actually scary in the second game. Not to say I didn't enjoy hearing her talk and interacting with her, but I feel like she was a much more effective villain in the first game. I do like that she relies more on emotional manipulation than she did previously. Not only by pretending to be Dr. Polito to gain your trust, but also by acting more and more affectionate towards you until you put an end to the many and she betrays you. Thank you for running my errands, puppet. I know you have str str struggled, but I never had any intention of destroying the Von Braun. Destroying the of course, Shodan would try to continue her pursuit of dominance over the world the second she was able to. Tossing you aside like trash, she gains control of the Von Braun's state-of-the-art faster-than-light drives and begins manipulating them to create a new reality in the same image as Citadel Station from the first game. This is where you face off against her, finally being able to liberate yourself from the entity that's been controlling you for the whole game. She exists as a giant floating head in the center of an arena, and sends out smaller versions of herself to attack you. Your goal is to hack into three terminals to drop her shield, while you're not only taking damage from her, but being shocked by the floor as well. It all ends with some super cathartic shots to the dome that send Shodan back down to nothing, but she was asking for this by betraying you. She begins trying to beg and bargain with you, attempting to get you to join her side, even though you know she's just gonna try to betray you the second she has the chance. Shodan's reign of terror is ended with one of the weirdest and most surprising final lines I can think of. Join me, human, and, 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 and we can rule. And we can rule together. Nah. After this, Shodan seems to have somehow lived on through possessing the body of one of the few crew members that managed to eject from the Von Braun in an escape pod. Who knows what this could lead to in a sequel, or if it's even going to be factored into one. After nearly two decades, there is a System Shock 3 in development, but I've gotta say, I don't think I'll be able to take Shodan seriously in a third game. This ending kind of destroys all of the legitimacy the character had as a threatening villain. It's funny, but it turns her into a Saturday morning cartoon villain whose plans were foiled, which is far from how intimidating and unnerving she was to try to understand in the first game. Overall, Shodan was a really great villain to experience. The nature of the character means she relies heavily on writing and voice work to be fully realized, and despite that, she manages to be an incredibly effective and well-presented threat, all through spoken word from your radio. She's persistent in her goals despite being defeated twice now, and as long as she can find a way to survive, she'll continue to terrorize the world with the sole intent of wiping out humanity. Our organic makeup disgusts her that much. 
She may be synthetic, but her hatred comes across as authentic and her threats legitimate. I'm interested in how she'll be portrayed in a third game because I do really want to see more of her. The second game ended by deflating the character of any real weight, but I'd love for a third game to come along to legitimize her as a threat again. You should definitely give these games a shot if Shodan seems like a villain you want to go up against. They're still very much playable once you're able to wrap your head around the controls and the writing still holds up. Thank you all for watching and see you all next time. And if you haven't, please consider supporting me on Patreon to help me continue to make videos like this. some effort by destroying the greater part of Earth's civilization yourself. Please wait where you are, and a cortex reaver will arrive shortly to escort you to the celebration.